by the time I was sixth grade, I mastered that. I was actually crossing grown men like that. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real. We sit down with some of the world's best athletes and react to their highlights. Today, we have street ball legend Grayson, the Professor Boucher. How you doing today, bro? Great, man. Great. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun, man. We talk about highlights. You're like the king of it with the handle and everything. The first things we have is from high school. Or, um, tell me if this is high school. This was actually my highest scoring game my high school career. I think I scored 38 points right here. 38 is big, man. When I was in high school, if somebody said 38, they were like top of the state type thing. My high school was interesting. I went to a 5A school my first three years, and then I transferred to this 2A school. It was a lot smaller. There's only 300 kids in the whole school, but I felt like there was no competition because I was used to playing against the top people in the state. You know what I mean? When I came down there, I was trying to go to work. When did this transition come from just thinking that you can to like, oh snap, this might be a real reality? In my mind, I was probably a little, some people probably would have considered me delusional because even you know, I got no college offers after high school, even though I got second team all state. And I go to college and I played three minutes a game. And if the game was close, I didn't really even get in the game. Right. So people would have called me delusional all the way up until I tried out for the game one mixtape tour uh, and was on the TV show and kind of like, you know, in that realm. And then it became a possibility to win a contract with them and therefore go pro. But before that, it, it was like my dream. Nobody else could have envisioned it. So you mentioned that you didn't have any offers coming out of high school. Why, why do you think that was? Because a lot of these clips, you seem like one of the smaller players. And I know a lot of scouts think about like the size of a player rather than like a lot of the heart and ability. Yeah, just because I was always a late bloomer. You know, I like on my freshman high school roster, which there's a few clips in there, I was actually 4'11", 85 pounds. Wow. So you can imagine, I looked like I was eight years old when I was in high school. And then literally by the time I was, a junior in high school, I look like 12 years old. So they held me back on the JV team. No college recruiters are looking at a school with 300 kids. You know, very, very little of the time do those schools really get the exposure. I was just a late bloomer. Like I had a lot of skills, but people were just bigger and stronger. And on the defensive end, coaches kind of like lack trust. So the next thing we want to talk about is the and one days. How did you get involved with the and one tour? So basically, I was a fan ever since I was like 15 years old. I was watching the N1 mixtapes. And then 2003, they opened it up to where they were letting local talent like kind of try out. And then so I go to try out. Next thing I know, I make it onto the tour and I'm playing against my idols. And then I find out once I'm already on there that the theme of the TV show for that year on ESPN was the contest. It was the locals trying out to win a contract. So I ended up going through this whole summer long TV show contest and then end up winning a contract toward the end of the year. Well, what do you think it is that resonates with like a basketball fan about street ball? The highlights and the dope plays of the sport I found haven't ever gotten old, you know what I mean? At least in this era. The fact that that's the excitement of the game in general and then that's like what a, there's a focus of emphasis on makes it high appeal. Let's talk about the names because Am one has notoriously given out some of the best nicknames ever. Where did the professor come from? I got a credit my OG godfather, Duke Tango, was giving out some of the most legendary name, street ball nicknames. You know, you got guys like Main Event, Escalade, Skip to Malu, Hot Sauce. He gave me the name Professor because he said I was schooling people on the court. But I think also behind that, he never told me, but I think he, he thought I looked like a professor. <laughs> so let's talk about that time when you got to play with Allen Iverson in China. Allen Iverson is one of my favorite players of all time, and I'm guessing you probably took some inspiration from him too. Oh, I'm with you. You know, outside of Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson was always my favorite player, and he was actually the first player, that NBA player that I could emulate, you know what I mean? Because he was, he was a small dude, PG. And uh, the first move I actually mastered that put me on the map for being somebody with, with dope handles is the Allen Iverson signature crossover. So right. I learned that when I was in fifth grade trainer taught me that and by the time I was sixth grade I mastered that I was actually crossing grown men like that so to be able to play with them on the same tour it was sort of surreal it was a really good time man and then I, I come to find out he was much a supporter of me as I was his and that tripped wow. me out so it was it was awesome so that was probably like the biggest surprise of the entire trip right absolutely absolutely I actually found out on a plane ride going home you know we, 
we were in first class. I think the airline actually sponsored the event. So my teammates and I, Alan Iverson and his people were first class. And we were just like talking basketball the entire time going home. It was a good time. You've done a lot of travel when it comes to hoops. What would you say is like the best country for you to play in? A few that were memorable when I did play was the first time that we went to Asia. We played in Tokyo, Japan. I don't know if I've ever played in front of a crowd that was that energetic. Come up the court, I'll just go between the legs one time, they lose like, ah, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't even gonna shake the defender yet. I would say Brazil was very memorable. We sold out a soccer, a soccer stage was like 25,000 people on a Wednesday. And then they asked us like, yo, you guys want to stay till Sunday? We're gonna, they threw another game on a whim and almost sold that out. There's been some high energy uh, places I played, um, but it's really hard to say one that was the best. Let's go to another clip where you're playing against an NBA player in George Hill. Tell me what's going on in this clip. So this right here was um, in Indianapolis. Every year they have the uh, Black Expo celebration. It's kind of like a celebration of black culture and this was like a celebrity game that they host every year. I've always tried to play in this game every year, but I schedule-wise, it never worked out. But this year right here, 2010, I had a great time. Uh, and then George Hill, you know, he's from Indianapolis, so he always happens to play in that game. And uh, he just so happened was on the, you know, on the bad end of this clip right here. But George Hill's incredible talent. And Mike Epps is actually the one who's laying that up right there. Oh, shout out to Mike and, Epps. And, yeah. When you see an NBA player or you're in these events where there's another NBA player, do you feel like you, you have to go at them a little bit harder? No, I mean, I know the crowd's going to love it if I do, but r rarely, honestly, do I ever play in an environment where there's NBA players. I think throughout my career, I've always played against NBA players sporadically here and there. I've done summer workouts with high-level you know, NBA pros and stuff, and it always got me a lot better. Um, but no, you know, as far as me, feeling like I have to go at the NBA players. Not really, because it was so few and far in between, but I, I knew that if I did, like, you know, people would go crazy, so. The next clip is one of my favorites of this episode, and it's of Isaiah Thomas, NBA legend, basically saying that you have the best handle he has ever seen. The professor, mm. the professor got handles new school right now. The professor mm. got handles in tricks. So uh, how did this make you feel? It tripped me out. And you know, I actually met Isaiah Thomas before this briefly. And I was at this, uh, I was actually in Miami Beach and I was working out with uh, some kids. And the dad was very wealthy. He would have different celebrities over the house every now and again. And I remember one time I wake up, come out after breakfast, they had a basketball court right outside. I walk out, Isaiah Thomas and this dude are getting a workout in. And so like, we kind of didn't want to bother him, you know what I'm saying? I gave a little head nod. And then we go in the house and then they come back out and they're like, hey, Professor Isaiah Thomas wants a picture with you. And I was like, oh, you serious? Like, okay, I want a picture with him. It was a surreal moment for me and I appreciated just the humility, you know what I mean? Because I found elite basketball players who didn't like my craft more so back in the day, because street ball had a connotation. And one of them who, who talked down on me, his favorite player was Isaiah Thomas. So to meet Isaiah Thomas and then him be like, oh, you're legends, it kind of gave me perspective, it was a trip. Right. So I want to hear your favorite or best ball handlers of all time in the NBA or outside of the NBA. If I was talking about guys outside of the NBA that needed to be on there, bone collectors should be on there. I think uh, you could talk about some of the, Gosh, street ball OGs, AO, even hot sauce. I would put hot sauce on there. Some people have a, a, a different connotation of him because his stuff, some of it was like illegal moves, but the impact, the global impact that he had on the game for a good stretch during the Antwin era was actually like really big. So those are a few guys I would add to the mix. Let's talk about your series versus prisoners. So this right here was actually a ministry event. Uh, a friend of mine who, he was producing a series of videos for this uh, prison ministry, asked me, since I'm Christian, would I want to go and give my life story to some prisoners to try to inspire them? And, it, and at first, you know, he just asked me, we just did it for free. It wasn't a money thing, but he's like, it'd be very impactful. And uh, he said, maybe we can get clearance at one of the prisons to play ball and make an incredible YouTube video. And so uh, in my mind, I'm like, uh, I don't know what that's gonna be like, you know what I mean? But I said it probably would be a good video and I, I would just love to impact the prisoners, you know, and get that experience. Was this like the most heated basketball moment of your life? 
There was some tension, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was some tension, but I would also say that it was actually a lot of love though that day. You know, you forget we were locked up behind bars. A lot, none of those dudes were getting out for less than like at least five, eight, 10. Some dudes were in there for about another 20 years. So um, you realize that there's not a lot of fun things that happen. So when you get something like that, it kind of brightens up your day. And I felt it too. Like the dudes were actually super cool. A co you know, a couple heated matchups. Some dudes didn't want to be a part of it. And like, but like for the most part, dudes had a great time. I had a great time. And I was equally as impacted as they were, to be honest, because to just live in their world for 24 hours, see how they get down. And a lot of those dudes are at peace despite the circumstance. So uh, mm -hmm. great experience. Next one we have is you with T-Jazz. Everybody knows T-Jazz have one of the craziest layup packages on the planet. Yeah. So you got to play alongside with him. We've actually done a few collabs. This was the first time right here that he was showing me his crazy lays, crazy layups in person. It was funny too, because I did that one right there. It was my first attempt and I made it. And he was like, what? No way. But mine wasn't nearly as smooth as T-Jazz. You know what I mean? He, he kills it with these. And I actually was surprised at his accuracy rate. Like, dude's actually really athletic. He was telling me that he had did gymnastics growing up. So I think that helped him a lot with his uh, body control in the air. Cool kid, man, bright future. We always have a great time we share the court. Who's winning that game of horse? If I'm gonna step on the court and compete, I'm always gonna feel good about my chances. You know what I mean? Right. If he makes some crazy legs like with one attempt, I ain't gonna lie, that would be tough though. <laughs> like you said, you've done a few collabs with T-Jazz, you play with other YouTubers. Who are some of the other guys that, that like T-Jazz is a crazy layup package, but other YouTubers probably have like different specialties, right? Absolutely. I mean, I gotta go with my homies, you know what I mean? The, the OGs, Bone Collector is a monster, you know what I mean? I've been playing yeah, Bone is. Collector since 2009, but I've actually known him for 20 years. My homie Air DZ just got on YouTube. Shout out to Air Dog. We have known each other for about 15 years as well. And if I had to go with the notables who've been on the scene for a minute, you know, uh, Dev in the lab is a great, good hooper. Uh, yeah. This dude, AJ LaPre, is actually from my hometown. Oh, wow. He's been doing great lately. Shout out to Chris Staples, Pro Dunker. There's a lot of good, good players in the YouTube hooper community um, today. It actually trips me out because I was the first YouTube hooper back in the day, but I wasn't doing it to be an influencer. I actually was trying to flood the market on YouTube to hopefully get more awareness that would lead to more bookings for me to go play. Because back then it was all about the live event. Now it's right. more about digital. So it's funny how it came about, but I love the way it's evolved. Let's talk about the next clip, which is you being coached by the legend Floyd Money Mayweather. How was that? Oh, this was a great time, man. Anytime I've got to share the court uh, with Floyd, I think I did like two celebrity games and then this game right here. It was cool just seeing his competitive mentality and drive and how he approaches things. Uh, very, very elite mentality when it comes to that. One of the best athletes of all time. So it was, it was good times. What type of stuff is he saying in the huddle? You know, right here, it's funny because he was way different than like, he stepped in as a guest celebrity coach. Normally, if we had a coach, they would talk to us about, all right, like, you know, let's control the tempo. If you want to show out, you know what I mean? Pick your spots. But Floyd got in there, he was like, hey man, we got to play defense. You know what I mean? Like, you got to lock these dudes up. You know what I mean? So he put more of an emphasis there. And uh, I think that's what happened. It was good. So let's go to one of the more popular series on your channel, the Spider-Man series. What was the inspiration behind this? Um, the inspiration was actually other viral videos in general. And my homie, Rob Monroe, who actually produced and directed a lot of these, uh, was telling me that, you know, pranks are big online, cosplay is big online, and superheroes. You know what I mean? So he's like, if we can combine all these things with basketball, I think we might have some special. And it'd be really funny if you just went to the park, don't tell people who you are and just play people one-on-one. -on -one. And so we picked Spider-Man because like of all superheroes, that covers every part of the body. Right. So it could be sort of a prank. At first it was a prank, nobody knew who it was. Later, everybody knew, but they didn't care because it was just fun. Um, but it was just meant to be that, you know, the, the first episode of this, I literally went to park the park right here. This is the first episode. I literally played for only like 15 to 20 minutes, but every single move I did worked and every single shot I took went in. I think I missed one shot on the day, no lie. 
Wow. But the funny thing is, when I would go back and put that suit on for other episodes, like it was difficult. Like it's the hands are slippery. I can barely breathe, and I can't see from when I get more than ten feet out. That's why I didn't right. shoot threes. Can't see. So uh, it was just meant to be, man. It was it was a great time. So through all the episodes, do you have a favorite moment from the Spider-Man series? Yeah, if you go back and look at episode five, I went to Reseda Park out here. And just the energy of that day was just like super fun. And um, if I had to pick another one, this is episode seven, I was playing uh, Carnage. And we did sort of like, it was kind of like one of the spoofiest videos I've ever done, but it was right. like super fun because I was versing another uh, superhero, like a bad guy, and I casted like, 50 or 60 extras and they were like reacting super hard. The whole thing was like, like I was laughing so much like under the suit as we were doing that video, but it was so funny. And that ended up being, I think the second most viewed episode or, or whatever, like 30 some million views. So that whole thing just came together great. And uh, it was a good time, man. So you're more than just the handle because it seems like you got the bunnies too, right? Yeah, you know, I hang around a lot of dudes who can put their elbow above their face, the rim level, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm sitting here with one of my homies right now, 50 and vertical. So I, I think that for me to be able to dunk as a relatively short white dude, like that that was sort of a rarity. But yeah, there was a time where I, I like dunk in the layup line and get a dunk every now and again. I haven't dunked in a few years because I, you know, I tore my Achilles last year and I just recovered from that. But I don't know, I think I could dunk because that was my right foot. I still gym on my left, so. We'll have to put it back in, uh, in motion this year. Let's get to a celebrity all-star game. I think it's the Power 106 all-star game or celebrity game. What is it like when you're surrounded by a bunch of uh, legends in different fields and coming together to play basketball? Oh, it's so fun right here. So fun. I've actually known Chris since about 2006. I actually played a few games on the Anwan Mixtape Tour. So I knew him when he was like relatively a kid. Yeah, I was a kid too, but he was, he was a few years younger than me. And then, we always cross paths like every three years or something like that. So this was a dope game. And, you know, I've lived in LA for since, you know, for about 15 years as well. So I've come up, I've like crossed paths with like more than half the people that were actually playing this game. So when we all could come together on one stage and, and hoop, it's, it was always a good time. So last thing we have for you is we want to talk about your Achilles. You already mentioned it. How has uh, the recovery process been for you? The fact that I was able to get back to 100% for me was like such a blessing, you know, because going into it, and still today, not a lot of people know about this injury, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of strides in the whole like rehab game over the past five, 10 years. Whereas like this used to be a career ending injury. Isaiah Thomas, who we were talking about earlier, actually retired off the Achilles at 32 years old. Right. Shaquille O'Neal retired off this, you know, when he was in his 30s. A lot of players have never come back the same. So for me to get back to 100% was incredible. Uh, and it, you know, a little bit frustrating, like on the recovery, you know, I tweaked my back twice. I pulled a muscle a couple times. The body is like, it takes a while to get fully in balance. Um, but overall, if I just say how it went, just the fact I was able to, able to touch 100%, I, I can't complain, you know? That's pretty much all we have for you, man. This was a blast. Um, everybody knows who yeah. the professor is, but for the people that don't, where can they find you? Check me out on YouTube at Professor Live, Facebook Professor Live, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at The Professor. That's it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.